If Mary Shelley is science fiction's grandmother, its fathers are H.G. Wells and Jules Verne, guys you might have thought would have been fast friends. But in fact, Jules Verne did not care much for that snot-nosed Brit, Wells. Verne, you see, was only interested in scientific rigor. Parts of 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea read like an oceanography textbook, and Captain Nemo's Nautilus was a fully worked out submarine decades before such things were actually built. But as Verne liked to sneer with Gallic disdain, Wells invents things, meaning he made them up out of whole cloth. Martian invaders, time machines. How could any self-respecting futurist pollute his work with such nonsense? But now, the future is here. And it's Wells, not Verne, who is still widely read and taught. Why? Because although Verne was an uber geek in his day, nothing is less interesting than old technology. Wired Magazine's three-part barometer of wired, tired, and expired gives the new and exciting a half-life of about six months. But while Verne was playing with his slide rule, Wells was talking about issues. True, they were the issues of his time, and you might think that would make his stories even less relevant to today's readers than Verne's 19th century tales of steam-driven machines. But perhaps not. Despite Verne's complaints, Wells's War of the Worlds really has nothing to do with Martians invading Earth. Rather, it was Wells's attempt, using the unique tools of science fiction, to get his countrymen to see what it's like to have one's culture crushed underfoot. Indeed, Underfoot is the title of one of the book's chapters, by an uncaring, expansionist, technologically advanced foreign power. He'd hoped his compatriots would realize the cruelty of what Britain was doing in India and other places. Indeed, Wells makes a parody of Great Britain's macho posturing by portraying his Martian war machines as giant, strutting walkers with a phallic third leg leading the way. And Wells as the time machine isn't really about a trip to the year 802-701 AD. Rather, it's a pointed attack on the British class system, with the Catalyte Eloy standing in for the feckless leisure class and the subterranean Morlocks representing the working class denied even the simple joy of being out in the sun. Wells' message, by the way, wasn't just that this system is bad for the working class, but also that it's bad for the leisure class because it leaves them so weak of mind and body and spirit that the Morlocks end up actually using them as food animals, coming up through openings from the sewers each night to pick up a bucket of KFE, Kentucky Fried Eloy. And although Verne probably said, plus ça change, plus ça la même chose, with a more convincing accent than Wells, it's old H.G.'s literary legacy that has benefited from that truism. A huge, uncaring power marching in, deposing the local government and crushing everything in sight. The widening gap between the world's haves and have-nots. Issues that are as relevant today as they were over a century ago. More is the pity.